Sweet aroma fills a loving house. Genuine joy fills a nurturing family. Peace to everyone. Welcome to Time Under the Eaves. May the sweet aroma be around you and all those whom you love. Virtual school is slowly becoming the norm. A few days ago, my son told me he needed a new set of headphones for class. To buy a new set of headphones, I looked on shopping websites, and I saw one that was affordable and suitable for his needs. As I looked further, I saw another set that was comparatively better. At the end, I settled on a completely different pair that was both comfortable and high quality. Although the price was a bit higher than the previous sets, in my opinion, the third set, which was the one I bought, was the best option. Today, we will be sharing, giving our children the best. All parents instinctually care for their child. We will always choose the best for our children to the best of our abilities. But at the same time, we must also think: Is only giving our children material goods the best for them? Is it really to their benefit? The quality of life for the majority of the population has increased in recent years. As parents, it is natural to strive to satisfy our kids' material needs. Perhaps this is a way to compensate for what we lacked when we were growing up. Now that we are capable and able, we think that bringing up our children in luxury is the best for them, and price is directly proportional to quality. However, This method of upbringing may instill the wrong set of values in our children. As a result, our children are spoiled, lacking a thankful heart, and taking many things for granted. Every August, we have a religious education week. Every year, the RE coordinator diligently plans for the event, so that the parents, teachers, and students may be spiritually edified. One of the many goals of RE is to teach our students about God, that they may treasure this faith as their own, be blessed through the continual keeping of their faith, and pass it down to their family one day. Though this blessing comes with a condition, they need to fear God and obey His commandments. And as a commandment from our God, we must bring our children to know the Lord, to keep God in their hearts. To rely on God in times of tribulation and to fear God in times of temptation. When Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he was firm in his beliefs and brave to stand up to her. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? The goal of religious education is to imprint God into the hearts of our children, fearing God and refraining from sin. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. God is our shepherd and our present help in trouble. He leads us on our heavenly journey and helps us along the way. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Lord Jesus laid down his life for us, so that we may be forgiven and our souls can be saved. Therefore, the best thing we can do for our kids is to introduce God to them. Once we teach them to fear and to rely on the Lord, they can receive the greatest blessings from Him. I remember one day when my child was coming home from kindergarten. He excitedly told us that he had a stomach ache at school, but after he prayed to God, the stomach ache went away. Even though it was a simple and short testimony, my wife and I felt glad and comforted. We were glad because our son, even at his young age, knew to pray to God when he was in trouble. We were comforted because the seed we planted by bringing him to church has already taken root, is now sprouting and growing leaves. This was the goal we have always wanted to reach: for our child to choose the Lord Jesus to be his shepherd. Train up a child in the way he should go; even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The Bible teaches us many ways to lead our children on the path of truth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. The Bible tells us parents to bring our children up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, meaning that we must teach them God's standard of right and wrong. 
Hebrews further tells us, "For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them, but He disciplines us for our good, that we may share His holiness." Undoubtedly, we love and discipline our children in the way we think is best for them, but the Lord Jesus disciplines our children so they may share in His holiness, receiving salvation. In comparison, God is able to give so much more to our children than what we are able to give as parents. That he may live with God, the story of Hannah asking for a son is very well known. Hannah was treated unfairly, but God listened to her prayer and gave her a son, Samuel. Hannah also chose for Samuel the good portion, which is to live in God's temple and serve Him. After he was weaned, Hannah brought Samuel to the temple and lent him to the Lord for as long as he lived. To show her love, Hannah brought a little robe with her to give to Samuel every year, when her family came to offer sacrifice. Similarly, we want our kids to stay in the church, protected by God's love, and receiving both blessings and grace. We wish for our kids to receive the good portion rather than treasures of the world, because the treasures of the world cannot save our children's souls. Do not withhold correction from a child, for if you beat him with a rod, he will not die. You shall beat him with a rod and deliver his soul from hell. Proverbs describes the importance of discipline. As parents, it is important to learn how to turn our children to the Lord. How should we accompany and lead our children on this path of faith? This is also a continual lesson we must learn as parents. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The best portion a parent can give to their child is to bring them up in the Lord, specifically to teach them in the way that they may dwell in the house of the Lord, and to have goodness and mercy follow them all the days of their lives. If our children can do that, it is also our greatest comfort and joy as a parent. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. This concludes our sharing for mutual encouragement. If you like the contents of this video, please share it with those around you. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you in our next video. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you.